Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about WebAssembly and how WebAssembly may or may not affect JavaScript status and the monopoly that JavaScript has on the browser. So let's get into it. Now this was an excellent subscriber question and I thought let's touch on it just a little bit. Because for those of you who don't know this, WebAssembly is a standard that has come around in fairly recent time. and. Basically what it will allow you to do is to use languages such as say C or C++ or Rust to compile programs that you can then use in your browser. Native code, if you will, and simply run it or call it from JavaScript if that's what your desire is. Now, some will ask like, what, what's the benefit of this? Well, the benefit of this is primarily that you can use it to do fairly heavy computations because JavaScript is great at many things, but there are certain tasks that will be much faster if you use native code, because that's about as fast as you can make something run right. And then people kind of started doing this thing. And there is a few frameworks that I've been looking at that I think is trying to do something that is a little bit weird, because there is this like there's this kind of undertone to this question where we kind of ask the question how will WebAssembly affect JavaScript? And the assumption there is that WebAssembly will actually have an effect on the position that JavaScript has. And I don't think that's the case. I don't think that at all. You see, the thing is that there are these frameworks out there who are now saying that all right, we will we'll actually create entire UIs, entire applications in WebAssembly. In other words, the entire UI will be just be one big WebAssembly, WebAssembly application, right? And I don't, think that's a, I don't think that's a smart thing. I think that is wildly, wildly overestimating the, the, the use case of WebAssembly at this point. You see, it's, in my mind, it's very similar to the sort of mindset we had when we started making hybrid apps. Okay, so awesome. The web, web platform is so intuitive to work with. JavaScript and CSS and HTML are so easy to work with. So we will create an entire application platform that uses and leverages these web technologies to make mobile native, make native mobile apps. And as far as I can see, that has turned out to be a fairly horrible idea. It's like not that big. Like there are absolutely success cases such as React Native, but that's not really a true hybrid application because it's not really running in the same manner. But just to put it out there, these, these solutions are out there. And I think that WebAssembly and this, this topic is kind of the same question because WebAssembly has a very, at this point, a very specific use case. And I think that it's a little bit premature to say that that use case is going to stretch out into something more than most likely being more a support thing or an, an, a complement to the things that you can do in the browser. Now, just hear me out here. I'm not saying that WebAssembly is not a good thing or that it's not going to have a place to, a role to play. But what I'm saying is that I think that what people always do, and they do this all the time, it's the same damn thing we did with SPA frameworks. So we had this need to make components on the web that basically have their own life. They have their own network, their own state and all that stuff, which is, you know, you remember jQuery widgets, that thing, that's what we, that's what we needed. And now we have entire SBA frameworks that kind of, you know, goes to the, to the absolute max extreme where we just build the entire application in JavaScript instead. So, Basically, I think that that's what's going to that's what some people are now doing with WebAssembly. I think that that's ex it's ex the exact same thing. We're basically just having a we have an ongoing we have a we have a coming hype train. That's all I'm saying. We there, there is a hype train coming, and people are going to get on it, and they're going to do something. Like they're most likely going to try to do what I'm saying. They're trying going to try to use WebAssembly to write an entire uh, entire applications. And I think that what's going to happen is that they are absolutely going to do this. It's going to be fun, it's going to be quirky, but only a very select few pioneers are going to use it. And it will never ever get to a point where we actually do this as a standard because of the same reason why Java is still the number one language in the industry. 
legacy. Yes, you see the thing, the assumption here, guys, is that WebAssembly is going to have such benefits that it might, may or may not affect JavaScript. I don't think that will happen because the fact of the matter is that just as CSS may not be the nicest thing to have when it comes to styling your web pages. I mean, people have been, have been complaining about CSS since the dawn of time. It's still around. There's no substitute. There's nothing on that can even remotely challenge its dominance for styling in the browser. Same thing with JavaScript. Because once somebody gets to a point, once something gets to a point where people feel comfortable with it, it's very tricky to get it out. If it works well enough and people know it, there's actually a large value in, in that. And if we then flip it and say, okay, so WebAssembly, how would that, how would that work? Well, basically, if the, uh, if the idea is that WebAssembly would challenge JavaScript for this, and, and we were saying that, okay, we are going to use WebAssembly to basically write and make web pages. Well, then you would virtually just have JavaScript and HTML and so forth to be just this formal step that needs to take place before you like, just to load your WebAssembly application. And once again, I, that's not really at this point what this like what this technology is supposed to be to to do in essence. Because if that if you if you're paying attention, then that basically means that you have a desktop application. That's basically what you have then the browser is simply the operating system that boots up your program and that's it. And although that sounds kind of cool, I think it's way, way too early to, to, like, to even take that as a possibility. That's not even really, in my world, it's not really a possibility at this point. It's, as I said, it's too early. But what I do think will happen is that I think that WebAssembly will become, as I said, this nice enhancement to your tool suite when it comes to do, making, like, creating browser applications. I think that you will have certain speci speci very special use cases where WebAssembly will be a very good fit. And I also think that there's going to be quite a few people out there who's going to hype this more than others that are going to use it for the really valid use cases as, as you always find people who are extra excited about a piece of technology and they try to sh like kind of shoehorn it in into every single use case and make blog video and blogs and videos and just promote it like crazy even though the use case may not be so as strong as they are claiming. That's what, what I at least think is going to happen. So what we, m most likely you're going to see is that WebAssembly is going to be used for most like the first the thing off the top of my head graphics rendering uh, graphs data representation d3 for example that sort of library is very likely going to have a use case for WebAssembly. the same thing goes for performance optimization source maps uh, these sorts of things anything that requires heavy computations and if you're paying attention and you kind of know a little bit about the web you will probably figure out very quickly that the amount of web pages like just on average that has the need, a need for that sort of heavy computation is fairly low so my guess is that you as a single like i think that javascript will just keep maintain be where it is today with WebAssembly being this little extra basically just an extra api just as the browser has different functionality and different different apis this is going to be just another addition to that with very very specific use cases only used by people who have that sort of need because most applications guys they don't need that sort of thing most likely you are going to simply interact with web WebAssembly either as a hobby level thing or as a part of one of the libraries that you depend on in order to do something on your website so to summarize I think that WebAssembly is going to be like uh, I don't think WebAssembly will have any all, all, virtually no impact on JavaScript's power position in the browser at this point. I think that it will be a very nice addition to the browser and it's going to allow us to make some really cool websites, but for mainstream large-scale programming, I still think that the state, like, things are going to remain the way they are. Have a great day.